What's up, everybody? It's Joe LaPuma. You were listening. You were watching the Complex Sneakers Podcast. As always, I'm joined by my two guys. First off to my right, Mr. Matt Welty. It's 11-11. Make a wish. Oh. <laughs> okay, done. And to my left, back from Tokyo. You closed your eyes for a good three seconds yeah. to make that wish. He, yeah, he told me. I yeah. follow his uh, yeah, lead yeah, yeah. sometimes. <laughs> to my left... Mr. Brendan Dunn, fresh off the vacation, yeah. glowing, haircut. He had the buzz cut when he left. Now it's you're getting up there a little bit. You gonna keep, you gonna buzz it down? Or you gonna keep it like that? Whatever the people want. All right. Is that the, is that the Tokyo drift? <laughs> Listen, he may sign. He, he he may sign to the Jets this morning. That's the rumor. What? Aaron what Rodgers to the Jets. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, should I switch my allegiance in terms of New York football teams? No, but or? you kind of look like him. Oh oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I very much maybe so. The hair. I feel like I could get a little side gig, you know, maybe um, doing some doppelganger work for him if he's in New York. 100%. You know the white Kyrie? <laughs> no, we distance ourselves from Kyrie. Eth- Shouts to our guy, though, Langston Galloway. Oh, yeah. yeah. And um, Brett Gottlieff. Brett Got- Gottlieff designed Got- the Langston Galloway ethics brand shoes that Kyrie just go, stepped on. Go out rewatch in. the Langston Galloway podcast episode. Mm-hmm. He wore them on court. Uh, that, imagine Langston Galloway signs Kyrie. I would love that. That would be fire. I mean, I don't. We, we we talk to him here, but I don't know the X's and O's of his business. But if he wanted to go, because there were some rumors going around there of him going independent brand, Kyrie, Kyrie. Mm-hmm. But it feels like if he wanted to go that route, like independent black owned brand, that maybe ethics would make sense because they already have the basketball structure built out for him, where they already have signature shoes. Yeah. I would love that. I think that would be shoes, a, so. a cool. Look That'd for be all cool. That involved. would that would be cool. Yeah, especially shouts to them. Shouts to everyone yeah. involved. There. Good dudes. What else is happening? What else is happening? I saw Creed three this weekend. Good movie. I'm glad. Did you get home and like start like practicing the hand speed? <laughs> I mean, I may have shadow boxed a little bit, but <laughs> oh, Joe, when, Joe, when you were growing a up, little bit. <laughs> when you were growing up and like you'd watch Rocky or whatever with the family, would you like run up to your like room and just like start like? No, it had to be big in an Italian American household. It was. It was. You know, I always identified with like the Uncle Paulie character because like everyone, every Italian family has like yeah. an Uncle mm-hmm. Paulie. Um, I didn't know that character. By the way, um, have you ever seen the clip of Sly Stallone at the Oscars? I think in '76 with Muhammad Ali on stage. No. It's a little. It's a little Oscars reference because the Oscars were last night. So it I was. Had to, I, I hope it was '76, but yeah. Yeah. A little, little movie reference for you. Yeah, yeah, back from vacation. Yo, yeah. Joe, you would be so proud. In Tokyo, I was at the Human Made Blue Bottle Coffee Shop every morning. Did you get th- really? Wait, you don't every drink, morning. Wait, I thought you didn't drink coffee. Yeah, but you know. Did I you go to there. Curry Up? I haven't been to Curry Up. I, I like Yogoro. Corey. Okay. Wait, so if I'm, you went to the coffee shop every morning, what were you? Maybe the person who was with me was was buying coffee. Well, we okay. don't need to get you into want, all the you, intimate do, details of my vacation. Do you want an Excel sheet of the whole itinerary, what he did? <laughs> okay, may I? Yeah, no. So, wait, okay. Did you cop any human made though? Um, no, I didn't love the selection at the store. Nor- did you go to Tokyo Hands? I did go to Tokyo Hands. I, <laughs> I had, there was an ordeal in Tokyo Hands. Um, Kerfluffle? I, I won't get into that. Yeah, went went everywhere. Actually, this is a funny little note. I saw Owen Wilson posted up in Shibuya. Whoa! Just, okay. I was going into this. Um, this bar where they only play classical music and Owen Wilson was just standing outside. I would love to interview Owen Wilson about sneakers. Wouldn't okay. that be fun? That'd be a good uh, one. You don't come on, you don't his part in yeah, right? Yeah, but I mean, what are we talking about? What's the sneaker history of Owen you could Wilson? Dig. I don't know. That's what we're here to find out. A hundred percent. Frosh now. Every wall, what do they know about yes, sneakers? Yes, yes, yes. Give me some quotes. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's yeah. biting my shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, everyone has a sneaker story. I always say it. Sometimes, you know, they get they say, "Oh, the guest is in the sneaker head." Mm-hmm. We'll find them. Yeah, we'll find the stories. We'll dig. And but it find sounds the like Wealthy's skipping that episode when we get Owen. Wilson. No, I was Are just. We gonna get I, I just to didn't know. For you? I just didn't know what the um, <laughs> what the through line was. Well, we'll find it. I was I was hyped. You go to Kith Treats. I went to Kith. I did not go to the treats. okay. I went to went to many many sneaker stores and. Vintage shops. What, what, give something like I haven't you run been up there. on Poggy. No, I didn't see him. Actually, I think last time I was in Tokyo, I saw him at United Arrows because they were, I think, releasing the Casablanca collection for the first time, and he he was in there, but didn't. Okay, spot so him in the streets. for the sneaker stores that you went to, give us like what some takeaways from it, and and name the stores if you can. Well, I would say more than the sneaker stores, mm-hmm. I was clocking a lot of what people were wearing on feet and taking some mental notes 
some some surprising things. Almost no Yeezys I saw. I okay. felt like there was a not a density of, of Yeezy sneakers in Japan. I can see that. Lots of Reebok Insta Pump Furies, which I was happy to see. Wow. Because the well, Reebok... That's always been big in Japan. Interesting. Exactly. And, I, and I'm, I'm glad that those things are confirmed in real life because there's all these shoes that you hear Mythical. about. Mythical. Yeah, it's like regional specialties or, yep. oh, people here really like this shoe. Yeah. And sometimes it feels like something that maybe the internet made bigger than it was. Yeah. But Air Max being, 95? So that's the other thing. So first on the, the Reebok Insta Pump Fury, I saw a lot of Insta Pump Furies, a lot of random people wearing old beat up pairs. And even like, I feel like some non-Japanese people who were there and wearing Reebok Insta Pump Furies in an attempt to be like, look, I'm that's fitting cool. in. But I will say I was disappointed that there were barely any Air Max 95s. I, that was my next question. And, really? Yeah. And that's another shoe that we think of as a Japan yeah. shoe, maybe more specifically as a Tokyo shoe. But I, and uh, for a second, I was thinking like, is it because there aren't a lot of Air Max 95s on the market right now? But there are plenty of Air Max 95s available. No, if you go, if also you, the Air Max 95s having a super moment if you recently. Go, yeah. Well, to Joe LaPuma, of course. That's, right. No, that's not <laughs> Recent, it. Recently. Then no, it's a, no, it's a, it's a classic, permanent. but don't you guys. It's not a moment. No, but don't you. It is a permanent, but don't you think that there has been like yeah yeah yeah. Well, it was a Cortez pair. Yeah yeah. And the Air Max, you you know you you talk about like Tokyo and the how Air Max ninety fives are mm -hmm. synonymous with it. That's for people that don't know. That's basically where they started reselling for a lot. Yeah right? yeah yeah. And if you go and watch the latest episode of Sneaker Shopping that dropped today with YouTuber Twitch star, is it Twitch I, or YouTuber I, star? YouTuber streamer star. I show speed. I show speed. Joe Lapuma is wearing a pair of Japanese exclusive Air Max ninety fives, which he has worn on this show, I believe. Black and pink. Black and pink isn't that like a Japan exclusive? Isn't that a black pink? Is there we go. Korean. Uh, yeah, trying to tap into the K-pop audience. Covering all the bases. Yeah. Um, other other sneaker notes in terms of on foot stuff. Of course, a lot of Asics, a lot of Onitsuka Tiger. Was it the Asics, like the stuff that's popular now, like the Kayano 14, Gel not, Nimbus? Not so much of that, more just like across the board, very GR, very core performance type of stuff. And the Onitsuka Tiger models, especially like even government workers or sanitation mm. guys wearing, oh, you know, that's like the... mid, like boot styles. Yeah. I, I like to see that. Give us a surprise, though, besides like maybe not a Air Max 90. Give us like, even if it's like panned anything. I mean, yes, there okay. were. That's the thing. I maybe they just didn't stick out to me because I take them for granted. But I just feel like I didn't see a ton of Nikes except for Panda Dunks and random Dunks, no, which no felt, Jordan ones. Not a. I didn't see a ton of Jordan ones. You know, walking around in Harajuku and, and places like that. Vintage? Um, any vintage? Like, <sighs> I did bring back a vintage pair. Oh, really? Should I? I've, yeah. Wait, I, is that what this is? I brought, oh, I, I brought back stuff this Last question, because you, I mean, we've been talking about it mm -hmm. a lot recently. Uh, Bape or no? Did I go to Bape? No, but was like Bape like pre highly prevalent in Japan still? I didn't see a lot of people wearing Bape or Bapeses. I saw a couple pairs of Bapeses on feet, but that felt more like new pairs and, and recent pairs. Because I think, I think you had even written about it in your story talking mm -hmm. about the lawsuit and everything where there was like when the company got bought by the what's the name of the it yeah yeah that there was a strategy shift in the brand to move from like japan to china as like the main focus of the company so i didn't know if it yeah. was still big in japan yeah i mean that's kind of how nike painted it in the lawsuit but i i yeah i didn't i didn't see a ton of bape actually it was ironic because a lot of our friends who own and run sneaker stores around the globe guys like Derek curry and dion point were out there when i was in did tokyo you get to see them? i didn't get a chance oh. to connect with them because Wait, you, you imagine if you went to curry up with Derek curry <laughs> 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 but um i think bape was uh did you go to bape sales though? meeting or something like that did no go, i didn't i didn't oh. swing by any bape that, the one thing about going to tokyo the bape store i always feel like i have to go and i always feel like i have to buy a little pilgrimage something, no matter what something no matter i always have to buy a little at. something at the bape store yeah did yeah. you run up on homeo New, newly retired homeo <laughs> i did not see homeo i think there was an atmos event that i missed but um yeah i did you, you give you the hands <laughs> the tokyo hands <laughs> <laughs> go back and watch our stash episode of the complex sneakers oh, he got oh, the hands sorry for the see. other way around for the background on he, that he got who, the who hands. knows i've, I've, I've heard the story you a couple better be careful <laughs> people. um usually when i go to japan i've been a couple times um i try not to bring back too many things I try and limit myself to really just one item. I broke that rule this time, but also for the first time, I did come back with a pair of shoes. Oh, I'm interested. I see a bag, but I haven't looked in. Okay, Welty, can I, can yeah, I show yeah, off go. the shoes that I bought? So 
I don't know if y'all have seen this store that we've posted on social media recently and kind of went a little bit viral. Oh, that's I in saw the past you had, month. You had yeah. posted on Instagram like the old sneaker box stuff. Yeah, so there's a store Soma in Shimoketazawa and it's a vintage sneaker store and you go in there and it's just a beautiful array of blue Adidas boxes, super mm -hmm. vintage, old Converse, Chuck Taylors and, and old ACG one stuff. Stars. Yeah, just just incredible stuff and it's the kind of store that I feel like I missed in my generation of sneaker collecting. And I know I know our friends like Abdul still do the stuff yep. of going out and hunting and finding, you know, dead stock sitting in a basement somewhere. And I've never really got to have that feeling. And this is like the closest thing I've ever had to that in terms of stepping into a store and being mm. like, oh, my God, yeah. this stuff is so special. So I did try on a pair and I did buy a pair and they didn't come with the box, it's okay. which is, you know, which is going to happen when. And I don't know how many wares I'll get out of these, but oh wow! Oh, I think I know what this is OG pair lava domes. Wow. Yeah, I'm, I saw you had posted those. I was like, oh, that was like one of the best things you had posted. In the yeah, thing. I mean, I didn't see. Oh, I oh. You want it? You want it? So IG story. Feel how hard the soul on this is. Like that's one of those ones. Well, he's that, just punching. He's just pummeling. Imagine, it like, imagine you know that's John the Majors in Creed Three. Yeah, that's called karma for all the shoes that you've done. <laughs> Wait, these were to fall it, apart. Squeeze though, it right? on the side. It feels a little brittle. What do you think? No. Joe, Joe was just doing his uh, post Rocky. Uh... Wait, <laughs> yeah. I don't think I feel better. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. <laughs> so, I when I when I was looking at these, you know, I was very gentle. I, I was asking before I could pull stuff off the shelves. Man, he had the cleanest pair. We'll post some photos. So if you're listening, check out the video version of the podcast. But the cleanest pair of '85 black and royal Jordan ones, ten and a half, just just beautiful looking. But um. Welty, if you look at these, there's no way to tell the size. I think this is from the era where the size was like printed on the line. Oh yeah, where it's like yeah, and it's well worn off. These are not dead stock. So, the the store owner, super nice guy. Please do go check out the store if you're in Tokyo. He um he didn't know the size, and he's like, oh maybe around ten and a half or something like that. Of course, we know I'm a size ten, and I decided to slip them on, and they just fit so perfectly. Look, you could still see the uh the the insole graphic so, is this permafoam yeah that's gonna say the the most so wow. the most noticeable things about this mm -hmm. shoe that mm -hmm. you're not gonna see on modern nike product that mm -hmm. i that i picked up just looking at it um number one the shoes made in usa uh which nike product isn't anymore i think if yeah. you find some old shoes like made in ireland like old cortezes yeah but I, I didn't i didn't realize that i didn't realize these are us made. yeah made in usa uh the permafoam that's a logo i've never seen yeah same before and the other old thing to tell this is an actual old shoes if you look at the sole how it has the u.s patents actually uh printed mm. on on the outsole yeah you don't see that on modern product yeah so i was i was super hold hyped on. to buy these hold on yeah. This guy all of a sudden turned into Rick Harrison from Pawn Stars. Uh, come <laughs> on, Wilty, no. Hold on. Okay, all never of a never say Wilty doesn't know about Nike. Did you see this? Shoe what dog. just happened? Um, I thought I was yeah. going to say authenticator. In, I was like, no, in, this is Rick Harrison. In, uh, Rick Harrison from Pawn Stars. Last, last thing, too, is lastly, is the other thing I don't think you'll see on modern product is this um, like felt, like towel mm, material. Almost on, Terry. On the tongue. Damn, mm. now I'm getting worried about the potential retail off. <laughs> I may have to show up with my skills. Uh, pass those back to me. So mm. I Good don't job. know. I don't know how many wares I'm going to get out of these, but it felt like such a special thing. And you it's know awesome. what? Also, like I want to support these stores when we find crazy vintage spots like that. You know, it's 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 always fun to go to them. And, but you kind of go in these stores, you you put your greasy paws all over yeah. a bunch of vintage shoes and don't actually spend any money. It's like, come on, we, we should support. Not them. not to like not to throw like a hard number out there, but were they. The shoes like reasonably priced. Or? Yeah, yeah okay. totally. I'm happy to. I think you know. Also, the dollar is quite strong right now, so everything in Japan felt reasonably priced. I think I paid like two fifty USD oh, for that's these. That's not bad because I just heard. I think when we had a uh, DJ Jazzy Jeff on full mm. size run because he talked a lot about going to Japan to Sneaker Street. Yeah. Back in the day, and he was like, back. Or, in the I think Hong Kong. Was it? Oh, I think Hong Kong. Yeah. Okay, but he had said that in originally all those vintage stores, like it was cheap yeah when you started going in like the 90s and then all of a sudden once the sneaker craze caught on yeah and people he, realized what they were holding and on then to. everything's like a thousand plus dollars so. yeah i'm very happy to have these though and i i think i've said this on here before maybe not but i'm stamping it right now i love the lava dome yeah, i feel like you. i feel like a lava dome retro could do really well right now this kind of like lumpy shape i feel like 
uh, Tom Sachs Mars Yard really set the stage for something like this to be hot. You know, there they, it's been a long time since they've done any. There were some okay pairs around 2011. There was like some Stephen Allen ones, and they did like a Lava Dome 2.5. For a couple years later, but we need more lava domes. Besides the Jordan releases, besides dunks, lava domes and wildwoods were big finish lines. I had really, I had yes, a like back in back in the day, early two thousands, it was a shoe that like they were so good at the color blocking. Uh -huh. Those two shoes specifically, the wildwoods and the lava domes, it was a big like, oh, I can wear this with the uniform and they're dope and I like. We used to buy a lot, like to wear at finish line. Hmm. Yeah, I liked I liked Wild Woods. I had a pair. It was like a navy with a like a turquoise, like almost this color yeah. swoosh. Mm -hmm. But I always thought that shoe was weird because people were always thrown off because it says ACG on it, but mm. there's nothing like durable about a pair of Wild Woods from like yeah. the midsole to the upper. And people are like, shoe's not waterproof. Like yeah. it's yeah. not really like a hiking shoe. Like what is this? Yeah, and especially I, I wore one recently. I forgot. In the past few years, but it was like a like uh, it was like green and pink. I forget. I wore it for an episode, but I feel like oh, I, I think I know what you're talking. Yeah, about. I feel like to your point, it wasn't as maybe durable as the lava dome, but those two shoes, the colors on them were always awesome. Even like the high top. Remember, like the classic high top. Ball um, Toro. No, it's a Ball Toro. No, not the Ball Toro. Wasn't isn't there? They did a lava dunk at one point, and I think the two. There was never a. Uh, There's a magma dome. There was never a high like top a lava dome. No, it's called the Ball Toro. That's the name of the shoe. Also, these are all big Gary yes. Warnett shoes. He's rest right. in peace. If if you want to know more about the history of these specific models or why these ACG shoes are going, that was one of the shoes that um, when I first got into sneakers, I remember like Nike was doing a retro of the Ball Toro, yeah. and I think there was like a green and pink and like. They were, they were super. Yeah, so those, there, there was just do a whole ACG episode super, one day. They're super absurd colors, and I remember like going to Concepts at the time and seeing them on the shelves, and I'm like, oh, I really want those. But I'm, but at the time, I only had like maybe like six or seven pairs of shoes. Like I was really early on in my sneaker collecting, so everything I purchased, I kind of like. I'm like, I want an Air Max. I wanted this. Yeah. I yes. wanted that. Yeah. I wanted to cover all the bases of For like sure. building the foundation of my shoe collection, and I felt like getting that super crazy. Uh, nine different fair, color yeah. shoe yes. was just like wasn't not. gonna do a lot well, for you. The Boltoro, I remember like December Jan issues or Feb March issues of Complex. Bradley uh, would not even sneak in, but he would put a Boltoro yeah. in like the sneaker section in one of the three pages or one of the like compilations of like cool sneakers yeah. these next two months. And I remember he always used to be like, they just look so sick on the page. Yeah, and even better just because the colorways will show some colorways, but like yep. they really really popped well pray for me that these don't pop again okay. i don't know how many wears i'm gonna maybe the maybe the sole. somebody told me that the soles on these won't really crumble but it might just separate from the upper I, again i know we have plenty of vintage sneaker collectors in the audience i'm sure abdul will send me a, there's no there's a also no text abdul message, gonna send a text essay, at, yeah abdul gonna send a text at 8 35 in the morning with the whole, <laughs> Is, a whole there's no air in that shoe right i don't now? think so okay. i don't think so but what about the vintage clothing? These. I feel like Tokyo, like, listen, there's a ton of vintage stores in yep. the U.S. They have a lot of old Supreme. They, but, like, the Tokyo, yep. I always end up buying, like, an old Supreme piece in Tokyo. Did you notice, like, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, you have to hold yourself back because you can spend your whole time there just walking into every random vintage shop. And um, you got to you gotta pick and choose a little bit, in my, in my opinion. Okay. He's a discerning man. <laughs> <laughs> I got to wear these on an upcoming episode. I you feel like it? I can only wear them indoors. Okay. Can we talk about some upcoming sneakers? There's some stuff I'm excited about. Did you guys hear. see this corduroy blue Nike Air Max One? Yeah, yeah. those have been like floating around. We've yeah. been sitting on a leaf. Almost for that have for like a, long a time, Sean Weatherspoon. Well, Sean Definitely. also did those uh, 101. Yeah, that's Air what Max I mean. Ones. Yeah. yeah. You have to look at that shoe and think of Sean Weatherspoon immediately, but I feel like there are so many good examples. Also, you think of all the Pata, like denim corduroy Air Max Ones. That just looks good. Yeah. And there's nothing that special about those, but, you know, it's it's Air Max Day, whatever, in a couple weeks or next week, and there there aren't a lot of shoes I'm excited about, but I I like those a lot. I think I think I want those maybe more than I want that big bubble Air Max one. I'm going back okay. on my word. It's, okay. it's a little embarrassing. Yeah, well, there was also a random. Uh, this was I forget when this was. Edison Chen a few years ago had posted it was a blue corduroy Air Max one. Oh, but it had like the Liberty print, like all of the Sean Weatherspoons on the inside. I don't remember that one. Uh, Did that end it's, releasing? It's real similar to the pair that actually. Oh came wow, out. okay. Um, oh, but this is this was like I don't know. This is either like twenty three years ago. Mm. So twenty three like, years ago? No. 
Yeah, 20. Just I was going to say, let's say 20. Uh, G Dragon popped down in the Tiffany Air Force Ones. We don't have to say anything else. I'll just say it. Pop down the <laughs> Tiffany Air Force One. We'll put the photo in. Can we? Can, oh. <laughs> That's all we have to say. That's it. We no, move Wealthy on. and I always have, we have more to, to say yeah, on so Tiffany Air Force so That's all we have to say. That's all I have to say. She was trash. Yeah, I think I, I didn't think you hopped in on the conversation because you were away on vacation. Oh, right? is that this where you're going? It was it was popping. Don't, no, where now all I'm going to be outnumbered. The campaign, the campaign has oh st- my God. has started early. The war campaign. Oh. Joe Lapuma's building up the troops, uh, <laughs> <laughs> getting getting the war elephants ready. Like, Listen, oh, uh, getting the troops marching. Uh, for, yeah, it's for looking, his for his idea that the you're saying I'm Tiffany, doing some propaganda already. Yeah, of course. Yeah, no, I'm not. You the seed just try, as much. You're planting the seed and trying to build a narrative that the Tiffany Air Force One is going to be a top ten shoe of the year. And sometimes I know people get upset because we talk about the the slack uh, conversations, but mm-hmm. I feel like sometimes okay. it's like an idea gets thrown out there that like isn't the best idea. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then maybe like one person will like hop behind it and then all of a sudden it's like, what are we talking about? Mm-hmm. I'm just saying. It, it, what are chance. we talking about? What's the top level no, that, the that Tiffany Joe Force, was trying to campaign for yeah, the Tiffany no, one? No, I'm no. just saying that I, I uh, basically, here's the thing. When we, you know, even on this podcast, when he's so definitive, I like, I don't say a lot. Mm-hmm. In the slack, when he's definitive assertive and assertive about, all, yeah, not even assertive, like my way or the highway, then I tend to dive into the slack sometimes. You so got your knock the fins on, dive but in. No, but the exactly. take was, the he take started was, it. So then the, I was like, there's some things I hear I that are time. Okay, there's, and what is the top level thing that that, yeah, that what, Tiffany what, Air Force One we'll Joe is saying is going to be a top ten shoe of the year? Well, the crazy got, part no, was please, the crazy please, part I will was fight against this. I feel. Uh, let me just say this real quick. And that's I fine. feel embarrassed because I already said on one of these programs that yes. it I would it's work not. Hard and done. No, and I, I, what Trinidad I'm saying, James said the same thing. He goes, <laughs> all, we're all over the place. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Trinidad said the same thing where he's like, he's like, your asses are going to end up putting this on like the thing because. And I said no because he basically said that. Because we're out of touch with everything, that's why we would put it. Why? Because of the Louis Vuitton Air Force One, which I still stand behind. I a way better did, shoe yeah, than the oh, Tiffany Air Yeah, I saw Air Force that. One. I just wait. He but, doesn't. Trina but, doesn't like the Tiffany. No, but with men of good taste. Don't. But also, he said he I would. Sorry, men and women of good he taste. He would wear it. People of good taste. He would wear me. it to officiate a a wedding, which was oh, crazy. Okay. But <laughs> either way, the take was, really and this is where I was just like, dude, what are we talking about? I didn't where, have the take. You're no. Nope. Okay. Yep. Yep. You did. did I? Let me yes, see. you did. So the, what happened was, is when you were, when you were campaigning for the Tiffany Air Force One to be a top ten shoe of the year in March. In, in March, but you were also saying along with that, besides the reimagined three, you were trying to say that the Tiffany Air Force One is the second best shoe of the year. I so didn't far. say that. That's a lie. You're Find, s- it. Find, <laughs> it. Find, Find it. Find it. The whole conversation is what's better than it. Find what's- it. This is what I said. There hasn't been many that I could think of. That has been better. I never said number two. That's a lie. That's a lie. I was on vacation. That's a lie. I was Just on go vacation. back. That's I was a lie, working, dude. But... You say, but you were saying what's better than it. I s- I went like this is what I said. <laughs> nope. See, he's see. If you're saying what's better no, than dude, it, then you're putting no. it at the he's top. He's lying no. on the complex sneakers kind podcast. Of. It's like I don't want to use lie. It's kind of a lie. I said <laughs> kind this of is a lie. Lie. everything yes. else on this program is 100% this is what factual. I said. This is what I said. When you start doing these lists of 10, it mm-hmm. feels like, oh, 10 is so easy. Mm-hmm. I know the list ten right away. 10 good shoes. 10 great shoes. It's so easy. It should only be great it, shoes. It doesn't seem like it's a lot. Then when you start putting it together, you're like, it's not as it, there's not as many amazing shoes right off the bat that fills the 10. Mm-hmm. I was like, I think it's going to end up on the list because as of now, I don't see many Right now, it's March. We always say, you know, in June, we do the middle of the year list. Mm-hmm. How much has it changed? Mm-hmm. Right now, see, the the thing that I don't like is I never assigned a number to it because I don't think it is number two. I think that it will make the list, the tail end of the list. That's what I was saying. Well, you're saying what's better than it right now? You're saying I can't That's name anything? That's not any- saying number two. I can't name anything? You are putting it at the top. No, I didn't even say that. No, I, I didn't even say I, I said there's not many – Sneakers that are better than it right now. Today. Not many. But then we not were, many could mean twenty. It could be. But eight. then when we started naming any all these shoes that had come out, you didn't put anything above it. I didn't respond. I didn't respond because I was is, on vacation. Hold on, that's bullshit to say number two. That's a lie. <laughs> that is a lie. Anyone in the Slack reading well, this, other, that's a lie. Maybe other people in the Slack had uh, kind of <gasps> said it. Some people agree with Joe on this, pushing yeah. that it was. But Welty and I, I never said number two though. Welty and I are pushing against the Tiffany Air Force One in every way that we can. I think if you see that shoe on a top 10 list of Complex, know that Welty and Dunn, I fought think, tooth and nail to okay, keep it off when there. When we debate this with everyone, you don't think it could end up like a 9, a 8? 
I you pray. Pr- it all I'm saying is, I pray. Is, well, I mean, all I'm saying is, it's not that hard. It's it's no. I'm well, I mean, saying if the it's DJ both Khaled hard. Five can like somehow make it into the top five. <laughs> the right? If the DJ Khaled Five can make you know, it, anything can happen. There. All I'm saying, <laughs> I mean, but that was a complex con list. I'm talking about our list. Yeah. I think that there's a chance that. The list that represents the total opinions average of the this, complex sneaker scene. This is yes. this is what it's. I had this thought. Number uh, two, you you're hold on, here. hold on, hold on, you're capping. I had <laughs> no. He took the beanie off. I had this thought, uh, I think two days ago, where uh, nowadays it feels like there's certain shoes that Nike designs Damn. with the outlook that regardless of how the shoe is, it's like mm. a formulaic collaboration where mm. they're like putting it, building it in the lab of like the Instagram algorithm yeah. sneaker blog where these are going to, not because Nike puts 10 shoes out into the ether and we all vote with our personal opinion, which are the best. Mm. They've like kind of predetermined that these are going to be the biggest sneaker moments of the calendar year, yep. right? Where you put together a Tiffany collaboration, you put together a Ben and Jerry's collaboration you put together a fragment travis scott no matter what they're instantly going to dominate the sneaker news cycle just because of all the pieces and parts Mm -hmm. put together but just because they make so much noise do we instantly have to validate them as the best products no but that was that was my whole kind of takeaway on this where it's like you feel like the tiffany air force one is a shoe validated by big moments not by actual not big moments where it's like it's a shoe that nike designed in the algorithm lab where it's like all of a sudden you know it's going to be the most talked about things but (laughs) and here we are talking about it again yes of course this is taking longer but that's fine the worst take thank god you were on vacation the worst take he put the jeff staple uh, because it had the Tiffany thumbnail. It was a in joke. Wait, 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 oh, wait, it was wait, a what? joke. Wait, what? This it was is a thousand percent baseball. a joke. Okay, so here we go. Here this we go. The worst take. My this take. Was, no, it's well, a joke. You have to explain. You have to explain. It's a joke. I don't even yeah. know what you're talking about. Let so me explain the it then. Know Let me explain about. it then. Walk it back. I had said that, in my opinion, that the Action Bronson New Balance a better shoe than the Tiffany Air Force. And I agree. I agree that Action Bronson shoe hopefully is going to make the ten list. Okay, other people. Do you think it's better than the Tiffany Air Force one? Can't call it right now. I have to think about it. Okay, I, I do. I do think it's a better shoe. I do think that the Tiffany Air Force One for the grander audience or whatever just has more spread. That's why I think it's going to make the list. Either way, with that said, worst joke. I just ever. saw it as an instant lineup where ev- people who work with us were saying that no way that the Action Bronson shoe is better than the Tiffany Air Force One. Not me. Okay, I didn't say that. Either way, I was going through the complex YouTube. Uh, page and the way that the page lined up yeah that the action bronson episode with his shoe a full size run yes was literally right above the thumbnail of jeff staple next to the tiffany air force one and he went by and, and, and i go <laughs> it, it, it was just an easy the joke lined itself <laughs> up with the correlation joke, here <laughs> where, the act, where the action bronson episode had two hundred twenty five thousand views and the jeff staple episode had a hundred and five thousand views worst no, joke ever no shots but i go hey i go look the Action Bronson shoes twice as popular as the Tiffany Air Force One, just because it was it was instant, it was laid out in front. It was a, it God wasn't you meant were to be. Se- the lava domes and you missed that. It was not <laughs> meant to be okay. serious. Well, okay. I'm really surprised that I'm, the, it was lined up as number two that you put number two for the Tiffany. That's not right, man. It's not right that you you lied and said that because I, I didn't say that because I, I don't think that. Okay, but I like these discussions, man. We did like you know, just we, ten have, minutes. You know what we haven't discussed. The other action Bronson New Balances? No, what shoes we're wearing. Oh. Also, what we haven't discussed, get the close up our boy Nick Bianco. Back behind the camera. Yeah, a little be you know, behind a little the scenes, inside. Literally. Shout out to Nick though. Literally. Um I'm wearing the Nike Good ACG. Discussion. We'll see you in uh we'll Give see you in December. <laughs> no. November. No. Yeah. We're here we are. We should, yeah, discussing the sneakers of the year in March. I'm wearing the Nike ACG Air Nasu two. A Nate Van Hook design model. This is my official rain sneaker. I, you, you know, put I, some miles in on those in Tokyo. You said uh, a little bit. Actually, I, I put way more miles. I put like a hundred thousand steps on the Action Bronson New Balances. But did I did. Br- I did bring these. What's up? The did the fuel cell hold up? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I brought these to Tokyo as well. So I was hiking down to Kamakura. And these oh were, boy, I saw you in the actions out day. there too. Thank you. I'm wearing the Nike Craft General Purpose Tom Sachs shoe. Influenced by Welty. He had those before I did, I think. 
Be warm before I did. I for didn't sure. Say it. I right. didn't say it. I also, <laughs> if you look, if you look, I kind of got the high waters. Remember the joke <laughs> when you used to roast in like middle school? Mm-hmm. What are you waiting for the flood? It is yeah. raining. Where the rest week. of your pants go? Yeah, they look. <laughs> you you getting prepped for the flood? Yeah, they look like high waters, but yeah, down. You know, happy to turn these into beaters if chocolate if need be. brown colorway. Yeah. There Healthy. is there is a lot of similarities between that shoe and the like you as you mentioned before in the lava dome. Just right? looking at yep. it, you know, even all the way down to the midsole. Yeah. Um, wanted to support the good friends today. Who? Shout out our guy Thomas Lindy. <laughs> Dude, this is waiting. good. Friend. So much suspense. I was waiting. Who and is? and the good crew at Hannon. Gotcha. Yeah. These are the Hannon Mizuno contenders. You've been in Mizuno a fair amount recently. I think Mizuno, I, I think for a few years, they've been kind of slowly yes, doing things, agree. but not oversaturating the market, but just mm-hmm. kind of, you look at all the Mizuno projects that have been out there and just, if you look at them. Yeah, you put it together as a body of work. You're like, wow, a lot of good shoes. Yeah. Mizuno, I know it's not dealing with shoes, but if I can make a plea to you. Is it a baseball glove thing? Hideki Matsui did vibe? I, did I say Did I No, say I'm this just before? reading your mind. We're just connected. Mizuno, please bring back the OG Ricky Henderson Mizuno batting gloves. <laughs> the most <laughs> fire picture on the laptop. The most right fire batting gloves ever made, in my opinion. I bet you got the sway to get Mizuno to bring those out. Of bring the them back, the neon green and white and black. Are you OG, willing to do a collab with Mizuno and put your name on them? I would, and you know what? We'll shoot some content at a batting cage. <laughs> Can't wait. Who says no? Can't wait. Can't wait. Can't wait. Um, the other Action Bronson New Balance 990 V6, he's teased that in yeah. the rollout for this project. Welty, do you like that one better than the one that's released? I think I like this other colorway better. No. No. Okay. I, I, Immediately I, I shot do, down, I do, like Joe with the I do, I do get the, the yeah, point exactly. where, yeah, that one is a much more wearable, everyday shoe. It's black, uh, blue with yeah. kind of like a gum tan colorway to it. Yeah. And I understand why that would appeal to a lot of people. People but like me. I, I, I didn't say that, but I, I just think, I get why it has more mass appeal. Yeah. yeah. But I just personally like that first, like, jarring colorway. Same. Yeah. And more I bold. Think, yeah. Okay. And I think that, I, I I do agree that the other one that he wore, the other, it, the other iteration is, like, a little more safe colorways, but yeah. I think his whole achievement, as we've said on this podcast about the colorway that dropped is, like, a clash of colors and it's still being an awesome yeah. shit. I think if you lead with that one, the black and blue, it doesn't yeah. make as much noise. Good call. It's, it's not, not, not enough like a, of a statement. Mm-hmm. I know he referenced to it as like a work of art mm-hmm. um, on our full size run episode. Go watch it. But it, it really does feel like a conversation piece in the form of a sneaker, like something if you like you just throw it on a table yeah. and people would just all have like a comment about yeah. the colorway. I'm not going to lie. In the interest of being totally transparent and honest on this podcast i definitely brought those as a sneaker to wear with me on vacation in japan before they came out in order to try and break some necks with them you oh know boy, be like out in the streets of tokyo like yeah i got these uh, yeah allowed. you might not have seen these yet and i would see people with the 990 v6 on feet and kind of like just wait for them to be like so what's up but it didn't are, are you like the person at the dog park who just got like who bought who buys like the rare breed just so like people like come and ask some questions? <laughs> He's at it. Tokyo oh, Tokyo hands looking at some expensive <laughs> foreign stationery with the just going like this <laughs> the notebooks. <laughs> I hope you got some notebooks though. Oh, come did you on. get the um <laughs> the, the best notebooks there? Did you get the Goro? I did not stand in line for a Goro. I, I, Goros are expensive. <laughs> I will say that only a couple people noticed them, but there was one point where I was in a dressing room at Son of the Cheese trying on some pants, and I had the shoes outside the dressing room. You know, in Japan, we would take the shoes off, and I heard them going crazy about the shoes while I was inside the dressing room. So it, it, it got me a little bit of the attention that I was so, so blatantly begging for. Okay. You know not to always reference a tweet, but you know what got a people people talk, no people got people talking. Okay, okay, it was okay. a conversation piece, and I I didn't think it was that surprising. So Kawhi Leonard mm-hmm. hops out in a pair of the Bape two thousand and two R, and I just he was wearing one Stone Island pants. I thought it looked cool, and mm-hmm. I just go remember when everyone laughed at Kawhi signing to New Balance. I have to ask you one things that I don't see. Are one you always reference people hating on New Balance and Solomon? I don't see that at all. I get in the like it's do in my you? mentions all the time. I never it's, see that. It's, I don't see it, but I could see how people would be just what bothering they say? about that. It, it's it's it, when you post something, and I'm and I'm not trying to make everyone say 
this is the coolest thing ever. It's just like if I like something, I like to champion the things that I like. Yeah, so yeah, I'm of like course. I'm like, dang, these are good, you know? And so you put it out there and you know, it gets a mostly positive reaction, but the, when it's getting the positive reaction, there's a bunch of people in the or not a bunch, but like a handful of people always in the comments who are like, Oh, y'all are crazy if you think that these are cool, these are still whacked, and yeah. da, 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 da. And it, I oh, I mean, you see it with New Balance because I feel like people are uh, reluctant to, even though the brand's gained a considerable amount of popularity, mm -hmm. there's a, a lot of people who are just, I would just say, more traditional sneaker heads where it's like Nike yeah. bias are like reluctant to hop on the trend. Yeah, I did see a lot of Solomon hate when we were talking about Rihanna at the Super Bowl. Okay. Ooh, I, I love I, those. I, but I you do, you take, it. even if it's 90-10, Positive, you'll be like, I can't believe people uh, are hating you. you yeah, was, I get, I get it, but there it is there a is little the, for for the Twitter, maybe. But I don't, I don't understand why it was like. I, oh, also, I didn't laugh at Kawhi. Did did you? I didn't laugh at him. We didn't, but I, there were a lot of people that were just talking about at the time where it's like, oh, New Balance is corny. Of course, Kawhi would like sign to the brand. Kawhi is not corny. Can, can I take it back a little G. bit to another New Balance conversation oh. that happened not among us, but uh, on Twitter? Um, but this is a little bit old at this point, and I don't want to spend too much time hating on other people's lists because, you know, anytime, <laughs> anytime, anytime somebody published a list, not, or, there's always legitimate criticism of it. Yeah, I mean, but, we just debated the Tiffany. You guys hate yeah. it. Should we so. talk about this real quick? Just real quick. Just yeah, you, you can you, okay. shoot it off. GQ published the, I think it's called the definitive. No, let me let me find exactly what it's called because the, the headline is very important. It, I think it was the ten best New Balance. This GQ list is called the definitive ranking of the best New Balance sneakers. But it really was just a, for transparency sake. It was like a like a market affiliate link. Yes. Right, but you should just label a list like the that because may have been well, because if you put out a list that like purports to be on some level the best New Balances and it's written by people who like don't know which New Balances are culturally important, don't know which ones are historically important, when they've been in and out of vogue, why they contributed certain things to New Balances, design catalog, really anything about that. And it's just a random, and I know Wealthy feels the same way about this, you know, a random collection of New Balance shoes that are on the shelves right now. That's a fine list to make if you just say, it, these are the best so New Balance shoes you can buy right now. Yeah, our favorite, new, right now. our favorite New Balances that you can buy right now. But when you call type. it the definitive ranking of New Balances, and you didn't even mention the fifteen hundred or what else was missing off of there, wealthy like, like everything. Ah, uh, just you know, and he was at Tokyo getting <laughs> getting tight about the list. No, no but I mean I, like I know, you know he was. He tweeted. People always want to hate on lists, you know, and I, I, you know a lot of the list complex published people have a lot of nitpicking to do about them. But this is to me is like one of those ones where you could tell it wasn't based on anything. Uh, really deep or meaningful, and and that was upsetting. That frustrates okay, you. You can feel however you feel. <laughs> uh, what else? Oh, uh, what else? There's a package still. Oh, I did. Yes, we have some more sneakers to Look talk it, about. He came with gifts. Yes, <laughs> I no, came back gifts. to some sneakers on my desk. I have a pair of the Jordan Three White Cement Reimagined, and I want to talk about the shoe because I feel like we it's should. the best sneaker of the year so far. Um, and mate end up there at the end of the year. There's a lot of controversy with the shoe right now, though. Yeah, and I missed out on some of this because I was away trying to stay off social of, media. A lot but of QC issues. Yeah, people are upset on the White Cement Jordan 3s with the elephant print situation to some extent, feeling like maybe it's not as thin as it should be because well, the, there's the some OGs look particularly thin. But there's variation in no, 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 the OGs. No, that, that's not the issue. Um, the I issue, think some people are upset about that. No, I, well, I would say the majority of the issue with it is, is that there's not... Um, consistency right between the pairs there's some pairs where it's like the elephant prints like hardly recognizable mm -hmm. there's pairs where it's like the like between the left and the right shoe you might have a yeah or it's like one the it's like the thin one on the, the right suede is like super saturated yeah. like it's not just i i get a, a bit annoyed sometimes when i understand that when people buy a shoe mm -hmm. that they want a quality product. So I'm yes. not like, I'm not. You paid $220, yeah, yes. $229 I, I get for these tax. You also have to understand to some degree how a shoe is made. And there's a difference between a shoe being a total B grade mm -hmm. in the smallest like glue smidge on the midsole. Yes. Like I understand you pay the money and you should be able to like deliver your product. I mean, uh, enjoy your product and everything. But yeah. you have to put a lot of glue on a midsole to, to, connect it yeah. to the upper and sometimes a little bit will come out. It's just the shoemaking process. Yeah. But 
to me, it's like maybe it's just personal opinion that never like made me be like, oh man, I don't want these shoes. I'm gonna make a post on like Twitter about it, like complaining and with yeah. 17 photos. You yeah. know, like I. I mean, I agree with you. And the thing is, like, I still want the shoe enough to spend the money and buy it, even if there are gonna be those small issues. And like. I, I'm not trying to let Jordan Brand off the hook here. I yeah. do feel like the quality control on these could have been better, but it didn't dissuade me from buying the shoe. Like I still want dissuade. the shoe enough, you know. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I still want the shoe enough to spend the money. And and again, I, I I do get it though. And it's a different set of standards here when it's a reimagined Jordan, and they're making all this effort to make these shoes look as good as they can or make these shoes closer to the originals and they're pandering directly to collectors like us or even more hardcore collectors and when you when you set that bar like you yeah. have to meet it but, so you, you can't be mad at people being like this doesn't look like i thought it was gonna look well two i guess two points is like one just the obvious joke is like maybe they reimagine what cement print even looked like <laughs> <laughs> number <Nice>. two <laughs> it, it is interesting how you say that they're Pan, not pandering, but like right. catering to yes, catering is a better word yeah. to uh, collectors. But you kind of are, but you're really not because mm. the percentage of people who are like the actual like aficionado collectors okay, who are going fair. out to purchase this stuff are literally the the one percent. Not the, yeah. not even the one percent. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. the almost like point one percent. Yeah. The M. Joe 23 Dan's. Of the Those world. people are like the five people out of the 10,000 who purchased the shoe. So it's like people just think the story's cool. Yeah. But they're also, the majority of people buying it aren't really. Real, real dyed in the wool. Or they're types. not, or they're not like comparing it, being like, how does the vintage pair look compared to the. Sure. Well, we have a special treat because before you came to the office, I know that he had a pair. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, let's take it take them out he's like no i don't want to look at them yeah i want to live unbox yeah the, the first QC impression them. here on the air <laughs> falls yeah. apart is it is the term qcing them yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 let's see if he got by the way these are the wrong size i i'm still looking for the 10 this is a 10 and a half but we did buy these or i had somebody help me out but like a civilian right off the sneakers app with exclusive access i didn't get the exclusive access but ben felderstein our co-worker did and he grabbed them for me while i was on vacation oh i just didn't realize that the box was like that distressed i yeah. like it yeah also, I made a promise. I'll keep it. If you don't get a pair, you said that you might get a yeah. pair. If you do not get a pair, I will be getting Thank you. you those. Wow. Thanks. Beautiful. Just make sure you check the elephant print first. And just make sure you stop lying. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see. <laughs> and I Tell talked to a former again. Nike employee. They said <laughs> that, I guess, like Jordan Brand's head of development just, just left the company a year ago. So maybe maybe that factors into how much stuff like this is getting is passed. a retro card? You got the oh, little, little thing in here, that. a little booklet. Okay. Nick, get the angles. Okay, let's bring these out. Let's bring these out. Air Jordan 3 White Cement. Reimagined. How do we how do y'all feel immediately about the, the elephant print? See the this looks looks fine from here. I guess it's actually it, it does feel a little bolder on the left pair than the right pair. See, I was about to say I don't really care about this stuff, and then start complaining about it yeah. right here on air. No, I, I Let me trust smell me. Them. That's important. I, t Brendan, I totally mm -hmm. understand. Mm -hmm. Like, if mm -hmm. you, if you get, hold uh, on, you did an eye show speed. Sorry, go ahead. I totally understand. Like, if you get a pair of shoes and like the cement print, like, is yeah. like non-existent on one to the other. My point is just like if like there's a slight stitch that's hanging out, and yeah. you can just like kind of cut it off. With hey, a tell that to the StockX authenticators, Scott. <laughs> Um, here, I want to pass these around. Yes, Let me I know if y'all think there's any difference in the in wow, elephant worst print unboxing ever, by right. the way. Why? What do you mean? Just it wasn't. He's no. He's no franelations. Just. What, what do you mean? It wasn't elegant. Smelt the shoe. Didn't go into anything. <laughs> then test them off. Okay. <laughs> unboxing. Maybe not coming to a TikTok near you anytime mm. soon. Oh god. This is a just pair kidding. from the exclusive access on March 6 before the 311 drop. I know some people were speculating that it was from different batches or something like that. But do you feel like look on the heel? Look on the heel. Do you feel like put the two heels side by side? I'm bad at this. To do be you honest. feel like there's a slight difference in the elephant print and one is bolder and one is thinner? Verdict coming. I I'm not sure. You can't call it. I can't call it. Let, let's see what Welty. Feels. I will tell you the three though. It's still nothing, a beautiful shoe. It's not again like I'm still gonna pay two hundred twenty dollars, two hundred thirty dollars for Beats that. it no matter what, except maybe the four. But no matter what, <laughs> a classic colorway of a Jordan three. No matter how many times you've seen it, just like 
it just Nike on the back. Man, Check for it, glue it, stains on there for me too. Right? Here you go, I'm, Rick Harrison. I'm still you surprised it. that because I think we can maybe run the footage back, or we're not going to. But I I thought that you were kind of on the record saying that since this is a white Air Jordan, that just not Joe Lapuma's cup of meat. Did you say cup of meat? Yeah, yeah. I never heard that. <laughs> but also, um, no, I just love the three. But wealthy, I'm not buying those. Okay, but you you wouldn't wear these? No, no. He's he's only buying them for you. No. So you, um, you really wouldn't wear these, Joe? It's not your think cup so. of meat? <laughs> I don't think so. I've worn the, the True Blues a couple times. I saw a pair on the train this morning. Love true those. Blues. But this, no, I... I oh, he's picking at them. Oh. I saw that too. <laughs> this is, rip that this brings that me off. back to uh, Brendan Dunn. Um, extreme. Brendan Dunn. Very... So early era of uh, on-camera personality, Brendan mm -hmm. Dunn. The Facebook Live FSR? Uh, no, but... Yeah. Second inter or se third iteration of the mm. studio, first iteration in this office. Uh, you hating on the Justin Timberlake Super Bowl? I have the. I Jordan had a lot threes. of vitriol for that. Yeah. Yeah. Same, you did. You same, really same did. shoe, but with the swoosh. Oh come on! You did. You you, you and were... the brown one. Oh you yeah, didn't yeah, like? yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. I, I think that whole thing is still corny. I mean, but that's totally separate from what we're looking at right here. Welty side by side, the heel on the two, the left and the right Air Jordan Three. Do you feel like there's a difference in the elephant print? No. Okay. Let me count quick. I mean, obviously, there's going to be people out there who are going to be like, hey, look at this. It's like this print is like tighter on this one yeah. than that one. But I don't, I don't have any. I That is not the – I mean, there's bigger fish to fry than that. Yeah. Um, these look great. Okay. Yeah. How do they smell? Did you want to smell them? It smells like your mustache. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Filthy. <laughs> it's a t t terrible idea to put in people's heads. Still smell like a what vacation? Smell like. Oh. <laughs> Uh, Pass them back. This, yeah. this is a uh, maybe something we can agree upon when it comes See, to air. air I'll be the judge of that. We've had so little agreement. Yeah, on I'll be the judge of that. You, they smell good, right? Yeah, these are great. Even if I don't wear, these are great. Congrats. Here you go. Had a uh, Brendan, maybe something a uh, uh, funny uh, Air Jordan Three recent uh, story that came across. Okay. Have a friend who recently got into shoes. Okay. Who's probably watching this. Um, and they were like kind of going through, they wanted to like get like one of each of like the original, not original Air Jordans, but yeah. Jordan models to start building their collection. Not unlike this idea that you put out here earlier. Right, yeah, to build a foundation, right? Mm -hmm. And they wanted to get a Jordan 3, right? And they liked the reimagines, but they're like, hey, I realized buying all these Air Jordans that all my shoes are black and red, mm -hmm. right? Which is yeah. that, but they wanted some variety, so they're looking at other colorways. Without knowing the history behind all of the shoes, they were just looking like, oh, that colorway is crazy. I think I'd want that one, right? So the Air Jordan 3 that they settled on, that, oh, they, no. that they want to get, and you may have to Google this one, oh. Joe, just to remember exactly which one it is, but it's the powder blue Air Jordan 3s from, I believe, 2014. Yeah, I know. And I just one. told not, them, I go... Not my favorite one. And I just told them, and, and I'm not trying to like hate on anyone's uh, whatever, but just like get... Offering advice, right? Yes. To, to a, as some, an expert. Yes, as, as someone who's as an expert who's, to a novice. who's recently who's recently got into collecting shoes. I go, hey, I just don't think that that's the one. That ain't people it, out Chief. there who like it, whatever, that's fine. You have the shoes, it's fine. Right. Like wear them, it's totally cool. But if you're gonna buy one Air Jordan three, I just don't think that that's the one it's to the one. invest your money in. I, I would agree. I, I understand people's preference is their preference, but also during that time, the 2014, there was a couple that weren't great that even I wore a lot, not even that I wore that weren't great, but <laughs> even, like, a man, yeah. even a man of mine. No, no, taste. but like, um, I thought looking back, maybe like the retro five lab three, th all three oh. in one, I wore those a lot. The other one, the what's the Hulk Hogan one? The Hulk Hogan one. Oh, the black and red one? Yes. What is that? Uh, crimson 3s? Yes, yeah. the Crimson 3. What Was that a 2014? That era. It was definitely the, that The time. Jumpman Air on the back Crimson era. Jordan 3. Was that 2013? I, I believe. 2013. So, yeah. Okay, and yeah. that's like Hulk Hogan has been wearing those for literally. And at the time. A decade. No, oh, yeah. oh, he came still? back. He came back. I think uh, he came back. I think me and Zach DeBasic were like, <laughs> he hit me. He was like, man, Hogan's been wearing. Yeah, he <laughs> loves the Crimson threes. Jordan threes. But that's <laughs> oh, actually wow. There was that span of like a couple years where, as a lover of the three, there were colorways that I loved during the time. But looking back, it maybe wasn't. Didn't need to I think I think we best. actually um, back in the era when we were doing a lot of like one-off video mm -hmm. concepts where it's like, hey, let's go to this event and do this crazy thing. Mm -hmm. We actually had Dallas Penn 
go to a local, it was either sneaker con or sneaker convention out on Long Island. Mm. And he had one of those, uh, I think it was the powder blue threes, but it was um, at the time, Gerald Flores, who was mm -hmm. running Shasta the complex Gerald. sneaker content, um, he had gotten an early pair from mm -hmm. Jordan brand. So they didn't have like the official, it was like the promo box. Right. And the idea was, is like, if we, can we, go to the event with these shoes and see like what we can sell or purchase or buy, like yes. if we can upgrade it. And like a lot of people thought the shoes were fake because it didn't have like the real yeah. tag on it. But little did they know they came straight from Beaverton. But yeah. what about the classic, uh, the sport blue Jordan threes? That's the black and blue one. Yeah, but remember oh, the extra butter. Yes, the yeah. episode. Our friend Alex. Yeah, our boy Alex who works at Levi's now. So well, if he Alex, wasn't at I Levi's. I saw he him a had couple a weeks ago. Yeah. Shouts to Alex. I love if, Alex. If it wasn't at Levi's, <laughs> he had a career in comedy. He's yeah. posting people up wearing the the fake uh I listen, I always I feel like that show would have worked in this era. Yeah. It's like the prank YouTube era. Oh yeah. It was like one of those like candid <sighs> camera Maybe like not. sneaker. Yeah, it was good. It was good. Yeah, he did the thing. <laughs> yeah. Is that is that video still on YouTube? I let, let me check real quick. So basically we took I think it was and, and was it Kmart or, or they, uh, yeah, they were Air Jordan had those, uh, Bobo Air Jordan threes, and that was a big thing on the sneaker internet at the time. Some of y'all weren't on the sneaker internet at the time. It was called Troll, wasn't it? No, I don't. I don't know what it was selling called. fake. But it was an early viral so, moment. Somebody researched yeah, that selling video fake for us. Air Jordan. Oh, shoes. it's on there. Selling fake Air Jordan shoes to hypies, hitting camera prank on complex. At extra butter. Remember those thirty dollars Air Jordan knockoffs from Kmart last month? While many readers weren't too keen on the replica Jays, we took things a step further and decided to see if we could convince actual sneakerheads to cop a pair. Are, is the video up? Yes. Beautiful. Look at here he is in action. Well, get on. Look. Yes. Yeah. Oh my yeah. God, is that Sam? Wait, show me that. Go back. I think I. Wow. Give him an Oscar. I, I think. Uh, oh my God. This is the. Then I came. I know that. Wow. One. This is what totally dates that video. Is is that I believe in the comedy sketch he's uh, making up fake uh, ASAP ASAP members who, yes. who, who, who <laughs> wore the shoes. And you know the, what he says. What ASAP Gorgonzola. Oh, yeah. like, that was what he said. <laughs> um, okay, b before we get out of here, there's at least one more thing that I want to talk about. Um, we have to give an update on this because it's something we've been following and it's something that people want to hear about. But the latest on the Adidas Yeezy product thing, Adidas CEO Bjorn Golden just said on a call that the $1.3 billion in Yeezy product, um, what they're what they're going to do with it is still undecided. That yeah, selling the shoes that. comes with, quote, a lot of reputational risk. He talked about maybe how they could destroy it, saying, quote, the other side is, say, we burn it, uh, do whatever it takes to destroy it, and it disappears. We have another issue. It sounds like Adidas is still undecided about what's going to happen with the stuff. I don't want to come on here again and pretend like we know anything new know, about it, I but know, it's, it's a but developing thing and, and people want to hear about it's it. It's just yeah. hilarious to me that, because we've spoken about it on here multiple times, where if you think your only choices are one, to sell the product, mm -hmm. or two, right. you're going to destroy it. So yeah. you're like, you're okay with the idea or not you decided not to do it but mm. your mind went to either we can sell it or we can go burn it in a fire somewhere right yeah absurd if they if they destroy it absurd right but how are you going to go to the point mentally mm. or go to the mental gymnastics to decide our only options are to destroy the product when we've already said i've already said this on the show mm. multiple times there's thousands, millions of people across the globe who are in need of footwear in probably the ramifications of wearing a, a product that's deemed culturally insensitive mm -hmm. is like less than their need to yeah. have actual footwear yeah. where Adidas could deliver product to them. I think they've suggested that there's a philanthropic thing they could mm. do with this product. One of the other quotes is, we're talking to many interested parties, people that have been hurt by the situation and we are discussing what they think is the best option. I really hope they don't just shred mm. all these shoes. I hope that they can give them away, you know, yeah. or, or sell them in a discount channel. Well, wasn't um, wasn't there also the discussion that uh, Adidas saying that like thousands of people have like propositioned them? Yeah, yeah, many, many people have, have pitched them on like, look, I'll I'll buy this product off. Like, Resell imagine how resellers. many like, reseller. I'm imagine sure a reseller a group, having yeah. like a direct line to the Adidas CEO where they're offering a business proposal. Of, I'm like, sure there's a group of young resellers who have tried to pool together their resources and get investors and, yeah. and approached Adidas with some business plan of, look, we will take all this inventory off your hands. Yeah, he says, I could tell you since I started here, I probably got 500 different business proposals from people who would like to buy the inventory. But again, that would not be 
necessarily the right thing to do. So should we advance a proposal? Should we work on something for uh, for Adidas? Do we have any good ideas? No. <laughs> <laughs> no not, not right now. Okay. Um, yeah. um, any other things we need to catch yes, up Yes, one on? last thing. Yeah. Uh, I think a good uh, lighthearted note to end it on. Fo semi fo semi footwear related. I know there was uh, much consternation in the Italian American uh, community about one. <laughs> <laughs> is this is this what I think it is? I yeah, don't. about one Chris Pratt uh, mm -hmm. playing. Uh, it's a me, a Mario. Right. right? Careful. Go ahead. <laughs> He's gonna get canceled for that. Talking about Careful. cultural insensitivity. Careful. Yeah. Um, Red Wing. Yes. In the line of the big red boots mm -hmm. era of footwear is doing a replica of Mario's iconic boots. So okay. just one pair. But wait, right? Is that a is no, that a they response? Were, I thought they were to, selling it. I think they is just that made like one a response pair. to mischief or it just gotta be. Gotta be. For they sure. They just pumped that out? I mean, yeah, they did they you did got a, somebody in a factory they, to make a boot. Didn't you they pulling up they to, did um, they did a big of unveil at like the nintendo store it was either red wing or nintendo store yeah, yeah, yeah. in new york where they had a big hoopla about it you pulling up to don peps in those <laughs> we go is, to wait, was that, wait, wait, we, we wait, was that the emilio's fitted was that the mario laugh <laughs> 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 different than the jada laugh <laughs> i love that project red wing in the super mario brothers movie that's that's <laughs> hilarious to me i want a pair man red wing boots that was an era too i never had yeah. a pair I'm Wait, a Danner guy. Did you uh, did before. you uh, Drake uh, Drake 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 did, Drake pull up to David Z cop in Ronnie, the Ronnie had a bunch of Red Wing. I remember the high ones. JLP in his full uh, was it Gold Bar era? <laughs> Gold Bar Sunday era. With yeah, the, the high top Red Wings. Un unbutton unbutton flannel with a Goodwood flannel, chain. Right. Oh, unbutton find flannel. that photo oh, for us. Oh Find no. that one <laughs> with the Red Wings. <laughs> And cook, the cook filter. Just the, the three Goodwood <laughs> chains. Wait, the three Goodwood <laughs> chains? Like I was meant fleek? <laughs> like I was meant fleek? Yeah, I got you. Yeah. All right, listen. This is a quick hour. Always a good time. Always a good time. When you're truthful. <laughs> anyway. Wait, did you ever get them to do the, you said three chains. I know you had all like the custom 101s. Did you ever get like a red, white, and green chain to no. have like the full like Italian? No, but I played lacrosse. For one year, mm -hmm. and I had a, I had a stick, the STX. Remember that? Brand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah STX yeah. Turbo. No. It was for midfield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I dyed it Middies. Italian colors, and it just said it was funny. <laughs> Real quick, it's funny because I think that was the first time that because people used to call me like Puma or JL, mm -hmm. not JLP. But I think that's the first time I put JLP initials and it went by that. That's like uh, when. Uh... Mike Jordan became Michael Jordan after he hit the championship winning shot. One year I slipped <laughs> one year I slipped lacrosse was not good, but I had the Italian dyed stick with the JLP at in the, the top. In the words of Adam Sandler, that's history right there. That is. And listen, this has been the Complex Sneakers Podcast. We hope everyone has a great weekend. Please like, subscribe. We will see you next week.